Good day everyone, Dr. Polaris here. I think the Triassic may be my favourite geological period in Earth's history. The incredibly diverse and oftentimes bizarre radiations of archosaurs that emerged, alongside the gradually shrinking synapsids, have gone on to shape the fauna of the modern world. This was the time in which the ancestors of mammals, birds and crocodilians evolved, along with a whole host of totally extinct forms. Of these, one group has been defined only in recent years, the Aphanosaurs. Aphanosauria, meaning hidden lizards, is a group of reptiles distantly related to dinosaurs. They were at the base of a group known as Abimetatarsalia, one of the two branches of archosaurs. The other main branch, Pseudosuchia, includes modern crocodilians. Aphanosaurs possessed features from both groups, indicating that they are the oldest and most primitive known clade of Avimetatarsalians. Other Avimetatarsalians include the flying pterosaurs, small bipedal lagerpetids, herbivorous silasaurids, and the incredibly diverse dinosaurs, which survive to the present day in the form of birds. The foundational characteristic of all of these animals was thought to be the advanced mesotarsal ankles, which are characterised by a large astragalus and a small calcaneum. This ankle orientation operated on a single hinge, allowing for better mobility. Probably as a result of this change, the common ancestor of most avimetatarsalians had an upright bipedal posture, with their legs extending vertically, similar to the situation present in mammals. Feathers and other filamentary structures are known across the avimetatarsalians, from the downy pycnofibers of pterosaurs to the quill-like structures present in ornithischian dinosaurs, such as Cytacosaurus and Tianyu Long, to the feathers in theropod dinosaurs and their descendants, the birds. Two clades of avimetatarsalians, pterosaurs and birds, independently evolved flight. Pterosaurs are the earliest vertebrates known to have evolved powered flight. Their wings are formed by a membrane of skin, muscle and other tissues stretching from the ankles to a dramatically lengthened fourth finger. Birds evolved true flight much later. Their wings formed from elongated fingers and their arms covered with flight feathers. Avimetatarsalians were generally lighter in build than the crocodile line archosaurs and had generally smaller heads and usually a complete lack of osteoderms. As for aphanosaurs, the group is defined as the most inclusive clade containing the genera Teleocrator radinus and Yarosuchus decanensis, but not Passer domesticus, the house sparrow, or Crocodilus nilicticus, the Nile crocodile. This group was first recognised during the description of the genus Teleocrator. Although only known from a few genera, Aphanosaurs had a wide distribution across Pangaea in the Middle Triassic. They were fairly slow, quadrupedal, long-necked carnivores, a biology more similar to the basal archosaurs than to the advanced avimetatarsalians, such as pterosaurs, lagerpetids, and early dinosaurs. In addition, they seemingly possessed crocodile normal ankles with a crurotarsal joint, showing that the advanced avimetatarsalian ankles were not basal to the whole clade. Nevertheless, they possessed elevated growth rates compared to their contemporaries, indicating that they grew quickly, more like birds than modern reptiles. Despite superficially resembling monitor lizards, with long, low-slung bodies and carnivorous diets, the closest modern relatives of aphanosaurs are birds. Members of this group were lightly built and moderately sized reptiles. They do not show any adaptations for bipedalism, which became much more common in other avimetatarsalians. In addition, their leg proportions indicate that they were not capable of sustained running, meaning that they were slow by the standards of their more derived relatives. The most distinctive feature of this group were their ankles. Two different aphanosaurs, Yarosuchus and Teleocrator, each preserve a calcaneum, also known as a heel bone. Most avimetatarsalians have simple calcaneums, which are firmly connected to a large bone known as the astragalus next to them. This type of heel, known as the advanced mesotarsal condition, allows for more stability but less flexibility in the foot, 
as it means the different bones of the ankle cannot flex against each other. Pseudosuchians, including modern crocodilians, as well as the crocodile-like phytosaurs, have a different configuration, where the calcaneum is much larger and more complex, connecting to the astragalum with a joint that allows for movement between the two. This configuration is called a crocodile normal ankle, and reptiles which possess it are called crurotarsans. Some recent studies have suggested that phytosaurs are not actually archosaurs, but instead close relatives of the group. This indicates that crocodile normal ankles were the default state in the very first archosaurs, with the advanced mesotarsal ankles only later evolving within abimetatarsalia, rather than at the base of the group. The calcaneum of aphanosaurs supports this idea, as it more closely resembles that of crocodile normal ankles than that of their more derived cousins. In aphanosaurs, the socket for the astragalus is concave, while the connection to the fibula manifests as a round dome. These are both characteristics of the crocodile normal condition. In addition, the rear part of the calcadium has a cylindrical structure known as a calcneal tuber. Although this structure is smaller in aphanosaurs than in pseudosuchians, it is still much larger than in other avimetatarsalians, most of which don't even possess this structure. A few dinosauriforms also have small calcneal tubers, although aphanosaurs have larger and rounded tubers than all of these taxa. Aphanosauria was only confirmed to be a natural group in 2017. In all, only four genera have been assigned to this clade. Spondylosoma, Yarosuchus, Dongusuchus, and Teleocrater. By far the most well known of these animals was Teleocrater, a genus with a quite interesting backstory. Teleocrater, meaning completed basin, fossils were recovered from the Middle Triassic Manda formation of Tanzania. The name was coined by English paleontologist Alan Charig in his 1956 doctoral dissertation, but was only formally published in 2017 by Sterling Nesbitt and colleagues. The genus contains the type and only species T. radinus. Uncertainty over the affinities of Teleocrator have persisted since Charig's initial publication. They were not resolved until Nesbitt et al. performed a phylogenetic analysis. They found that Teleocrator was most closely related to the similarly enigmatic Yarosuchus, Dongosuchus, and Spondylosoma. A carnivorous quadruped measuring 7 to 10 feet long, Teleocrator is notable for its unusually long neck vertebrae. Unlike the Lagopetidae or Ornithodira, the hind limbs of Teleocrator are not adapted for running. The metatarsal bones are not particularly elongated. Histology of the long bones of Teleocrator indicates that it had a moderately fast growth rate, closer to Ornithodirans than crocodilians and other pseudosuchians. In life, this genus lived alongside the cow-sized herbivorous synapsid Dicynodont dolicharanus, the cynodont Cynonathus, and a selection of poorly known archosaurs in a broad, flat floodplain environment. The closely related Yarosuchus lived during the Anisian stage of the Middle Triassic of India. The genus was named and described in 2005 from a collection of disarticulated but fairly complete fossil materials found from the Middle Triassic Yarapali Formation. The material is thought to be from two individuals, possibly even three, with one being much more complete and articulated than the other. The type and only species is Y. decanensis. Yarosuchus was a quadruped roughly 2 to 2.5 metres long, with an elongated neck and tall spines on its vertebrae. Unlike other quadrupedal Triassic reptiles, the limbs and shoulders of Yarosuchus were slender and are more like those of Ornithodirans. Yarosuchus is very similar in appearance to its close relative Teleocrator, and differs in only a few minor anatomical features of the skeleton. Dongusuchus was another close cousin, and was native to the Donguz River area of Russia during the Middle Triassic. Not much is known about this animal, as it is known from rather poor remains, but it can be assumed that it too was a slender quadrupedal carnivore. The final genus within Aphanosauria was Spondylosoma, from the Middle Triassic Santa Maria formation of Brazil. Friedrich von Huhn 
based the genus on fragmentary postcranial material held at the University of Tübingen. This skeleton includes two teeth, two cervical vertebrae, four dorsal vertebrae, three sacral vertebrae, scapula, part of the humerus, and part of the pubis. At the time, he thought it was a prosauropod. As with all of its close relatives, the phylogenetic position of this animal has fluctuated wildly over the years, being regarded either as a basal theropod dinosaur, a pseudosuchian, or a nondescript primitive archosaur. The redescription of Teleocrater revealed numerous similarities between Spondylosoma and a few other Triassic taxa, leading to their referral to a new clade of archosaurs, Aphanosauria. Despite lacking some anatomical features of their mostly bipedal, speedy later relatives, Aphanosaurs were pioneers in that they were developing the elevated metabolisms that would lead to the spectacular success of the pterosaurs and dinosaurs, including the birds still living with us today. It is a little mind-blowing to remember that all of these groups, so different in outward appearance, evolved from quadrupedal monitor lizard-like ancestors that lived in the early and middle Triassic. Thanks for watching everyone. Next week I'll be covering some more speculative evolution content, so I'll see you again soon. Cheerio!